Okay, so for those of you who haven't played against me in a tournament before, Fast Advance NEH with Archer is the single most common so-called deck archetype that I've ever played in my entire life of playing Netrunner at tournaments. And it's quite natural because the main cards that it needs to work, Astro Script, Sand Sand City Grid, and Archer are all in the core set, so it will never ever rotate out. It catches so many people by surprise when the Archer is raised. I've gotten so many wins off of the Archer, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to revisit it again, because you ha always have to respect the surprise archer. And this time I'm going to pair it with a new card, and we'll see how this goes. It's Salem's Hospitality, and the idea is now my fast advance deck. It's not so much a fast advance deck, it's more of a rush deck. Rushing is very difficult nowadays, because of the prevalence of anti-ice. Blackmail renders all your remote ice useless. Faust slices through all your ice like Swiss cheese. David gets through a lot of MBN ice like Wraparound. It's just really not a good time to play Rush right now because almost nobody has to bring out the entire set of Fractal Decoder Killer in order to start, uh, in order to get past your gear checks. So, Salem's Hospitality helps you because it allows you to see the opponent's hand and know whether they have a solution to your remote or not. If they don't, you start scoring. You throw that view, that Astro, behind that wrap round, knowing they have zero answers, zero outs, except for drawing up and praying. So I'm going to be up against a max deck. Uh, since it's max, you have to respect the possibility of Siphon, so first wrap round goes on HQ immediately. Wrap round because in case he plays Eater of House, I'm able to keep him out against her out, sorry, against an early Siphon. And immediately I have the Archer Breaking News combo in hand, which is really, really sweet. So, uh, be prepared for me to play that soon. And she shows the Eater, which confirms the Siphon uh, spam that is going to happen. So, uh, I'm going to s take a risk here. I'm going to score the Breaking News. This is a very big risk that I might not, but that I may, but that I probably shouldn't have taken because, uh, Siphon Max does run key, um, DDoS as well. And DDoS into Siphon is a big pain. You see, he has, she has activist support in the bin. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what that does. It gives her bad pub. She might be playing blackmail. I need to be concerned about that. Data League Reversal hits the table, so this, if you weren't aware of it by now, she is all in on Siphon. And DLR Mill. So immediately the Archer goes on HQ. Now the Archer is activated, but I still have to be prepared for the possibility of DDoS uh, completely nullifying the Archer. So, my plan my next immediate plan is actually to get a third piece of ice on HQ. This will allow me to have Archer into wrap around on HQ, which means virtually no siphons for her for the rest of the game. So that's something I'm looking forward to do. With 5 credits, it seems like a pretty obvious choice here. Play the hedge fund and toss the enigma on HQ. That should settle things. And I draw my second breaking news. So this is really good news. I have one breaking news to contribute to my 7 agenda points, and another to rest the Archer. So this is the ideal balance. Um, no one pointers for the opponent, both one pointers on your side coming into play. This is another reason why Archer is good. Alright, she runs archives. Um, that's a central run, so she's able to install the DLR, followed by another same old thing. She also has a wireless net pavilion on the board. Quite problematic. So another big priority here is to get a lot of money because I need to be able to trash her wireless net pavilion when she decides to take tags and in case you're wondering nope she probably has some other way of getting tags other than landing a successful siphon i'm expecting john masnori or joshua b anytime from now so uh click for credits i guess this is a click for credit war i'm going to start clicking for credits as well i have a sensor on the table which i would use to score my astro script if i draw an astro script but i don't so a pretty difficult choice here now knowing that she probably runs keyhole or she tries to DLR me, I need the Jackson in my hand to save me against the possibility of losing straight out to Archives Mill. So I'm going to attempt to score the BU here because I need to win somehow. This is probably a mistake, a very big mistake because she can easily take advantage, abuse the fact that I'm on uh, low credits. But at the same time she has to respect the possibility of me just flat out winning in a couple turns. Although the fact that I scored a Bill means that I'm probably not going to win anytime soon. So yeah, scoring the Bill was probably a mistake. I was just trying to take advantage of that scoring window because if I gave her one more turn, she could have trashed my Sen Sen. And that might be what she was trying to go for. Now, she has Paparazzi installed. 
which is pretty bad news. This means that she can begin milling me. I didn't realize that. This is a huge problem, so I guess it's time to start trashing the stuff. It will cost me 10 credits, or actually 12 credits, 8 to trash the fall guy with the net pavilion, and another 4 to trash both their oars. Uh, that is not palatable at all. So I look at my hand and I realize there's no way I'm going to win before she mills me out. I'm not going to get to 7 points, I don't even have a squad astro. So that is out of the question. So I need to win the long game. I need to make sh I need to cut the milling off right now. And I do have a Jackson in hand to save me against the mill. So I'm going to trash the fall guy and the net pavilion this turn. Uh yep, that will leave me on two credits. I can use the last turn last click to trash a DLR, which I do actually. The biggest problem is if I don't trash a DLR now. He, she's just going to install more 4 guys, more net pavilions, because net pavilion, while it is a unique card, she can still run 3 copies of it. So a very good thing for her to do right now is to install another net pavilion. That would really hammer my chances of winning. But it seems like she hasn't found it yet. Instead, she's going to play Deja Vu for a 4 guy to keep the mill in effect. So I cannot kill the mill this turn. But what I'm going to do is to set up for the long game. She made a very crucial mistake, knowing that she's a credit denial deck be between account siphon and pavilion. What she should have done was to trash the pair campaign that was out since turn 1 of the game. The fact that she failed to do so means that I get a lot of drip, drip economy. And drip economy helps a lot in keeping the resource spam down. Now, account siphon tries to come through. What are you thinking? You're on zero credits, you can't break Jack. You can't even break a pop-up window. Unfortunately, I don't have a pop-up window to entertain him with, her with, so all I do is res the wrap around. Very cheap, that's fine. The only big issue, I cannot res the second pack campaign. But, well, uh, the plan still goes on. I'm on a couple credits. Get a couple more credits and begin to trash and undo the resource uh, table. This is quite important because if at any point she draws a wireless net pavilion or a deja vu, I'll have to suddenly spend eight credits to trash both the fall guy and the pavilion instead of the four, instead of the two credits to trash the fall guy. So getting rid of the fall guys is actually most important. In fact, you could argue that I made a mistake when I saw the paparazzi hit the table. I should have. Uh, played the Salem's Hospitality from my hand to get rid of any Fall Guys or Net Pavilions in her hand. That's what Salem's is for, not just for uh, challenging their, get their gear checks. Anyway, I'm not trying to gear check the runner right now. My only goal is to get stem the mill and stem the mill I did. The mill is gone. I'm happy now. There are a couple of agendas in archives, but I do have a Jackson Howard on the table. As I said, keeping that one Jackson in hand was so crucial. Now she installs a data folding, even though she's Tagged. Yeah, she has a paparazzi out. Sure. You're not going to get money off that. Uh, you make the mistake of not denying my money, so now I'm going to use my money to deny your money so you don't have money to money my money. Um, too bad for you. All you can do is to click for credits. Now, here comes an interesting juncture. Max has ran out of cards, and I haven't seen her levy in the bin. That means the levy must be in her hand. I call levy right now. I see the levy in her hand. It gets sniped. The problem is, she hasn't lost the game yet. Because she has a deja vu in her hand, I don't win by trashing both same old things. My plan here was to win by trashing the levy, then trashing all his recursion. But with deja vu in hand, she can recur the levy and play it. So here I ask myself, is it worth it spending 2 clicks, 4 credits to burn all his same old things? The question, the answer is yes. I need to burn them so that she doesn't play any more deja vus or get any more siphons or whatever money or any hijinks she might have. So she plays a Joshua B here, and at this point, I mandatory draw into a Jackson Howard. I have nothing better to do on my turn, so I'm going to draw two cards, or three cards rather, with any HS ability and see what I get. And I get the game winning Salem's. I'm going to play the Salem's here, knock off his last bit of recursion. She cannot play the levy, and she knows as well as me that she has no way out to win this game. So everything fell beautifully into place allowing me to show off my stifle and rifle strategy. First, you stifle your opponent. Knowing that they are on siphon spam, all you need to do is to drop a couple of really annoying eyes on HQ. The moment Archer plus Wraparound lined themselves up and I had the breaking news in my score area, I knew I was safe from siphon. That is such an oppressive server to deal with. Especially Archer. 
because now a single David doesn't cut it. You need 4 David tokens to get past 3 for the Archer and 1 for the Wraparound. So that's really amazing, the fact that even with an entire David, they still can't get a single Siphon through. They need the support of an Eater or a Faust, which is incredibly expensive. It makes siphoning completely impractical, and when you nullify more than half of the influence, that's when you start winning the game, because now you have money, and with money, you can trash their resource spam, and the loggers to the corpse asset spam. Also note that it's incredibly cheap to res. At only 6 credits, a lot of corpse won't expect that you're able to, be, to be properly defend your HQ. They might run with a single David, maybe a Faust and think, oh I can just get through. For 6 credits, you keep them out so very well. Once you're done stifling them, you rifle through their pockets. You see the Salems, you use it and target them most important card, the linchpin card, the one card they need to continue functioning in this game, obviously the levy. Of course it should be noted that that was a very narrow use case. Most of the time you won't get the opportunity to do an amazing blowout like that. Most runners uh, don't blow through their decks as quickly as Max does, so with the amount of redundancy and recursion most decks run nowadays, it's probably not that easy to pull Salem's off to great effect. But that doesn't detract from it being a good card nonetheless. Salem's can be really effective when used in the right manner. It's so oppressive compared to targeted marketing, because with marketing at least he can play, he'll give me 10 credits, but it's not over. However, with Salem's it just completely shuts him down, and that's it. Con concession. Can't do anything else. So, Stifle and Rifle, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching Happy Net Running, see you around.